Welcome everyone to our video interview today with Dr. Harris from the Tisch MS Research Centre in New York. You may remember that we've previously talked about the Tisch MS Research Centre and in terms of their stem cell therapy that they're working on for people with MS. Off the back of those stories we found that people are really interested in the work that they're doing um, so we got in contact um, with the people at Tisch and they've kindly agreed to give up their time to, to do an interview with us today so it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Harris. Um, Dr. Harris, I wonder if you'd mind starting by just giving a brief introduction to yourself and telling us a bit about um, the TSMS Research Center. Uh, sure. First of all, thank you for having me. Um, I said uh, my name is Dr. Violan Harris. I am a senior researcher here at the Tisch MS Research Center of New York in, in New York City. Um, the Tisch Center was started about ten years ago by Dr. Saud Sadiq. He um, uh, is a, an MS doctor and he has been doing MS research um, at other institutes and really started this center to um, facilitate um, translational research. And the thing that's unique about the Tisch Center is that we are uh, located in, in close proximity to a uh, world-renowned MS clinic. And this enables really the kind of translational research that I think is exemplified in, in our stem cell trial. So there's constant collaboration between physicians and scientists, and uh, I think that really accelerates the pace of uh, discovery uh, here at the Tisch Center. Okay, fantastic. Um, so you mentioned the stem cell trial, and obviously that's what we've covered um, briefly on MS Translate. Can you talk to us a little bit about that project? Yeah, so it, it started about well over 10 years ago, um, and then when I joined the lab, we, um, we really set out with the objective of using stem cells to um, to repair damage in uh, the brain and spinal cord in MS. And with the, the really lofty goal of not only preventing further damage and further disability, but really reversing established disability. So we, um, we started looking at bone marrow stem cells. Um, the attractive thing about bone marrow stem cells, of course, is that they can be used autologously, so you can use the patient's own stem cells. And uh, within bone marrow, we have different types of stem cells, one in particular called mesenchymal stem cells, which are um, interesting because of their unique pro therapeutic properties in, in terms of tissue damage. So as we started studying uh, mesenchymal stem cells, or MSCs, we were eventually able to convert them into a neural progenitor uh, population of cells, so brain-like cell population, and we call these mesenchymal stem cell-derived neural progenitors, or MSCNPs. And we noticed early on that these cells uh, not only have um, prop uh, repair properties, um, so they secrete a number of growth factors that can influence tissue repair. They also secrete, secrete factors that can modulate the immune response. So one of the um, uh, kind of landmark experiments that we did was in a, uh, an animal model, the EAE animal model of MS, which is well known. Um, and we let the mice basically develop disease um, and develop a sort of chronic form of the disease. And then we injected the MSCNP cells uh, intrathecally into the mice, so that's in the spinal fluid, in the space that surrounds the, the brain and spinal cord. And we were able to reverse some of the chronic disability in these mice. Um, and one thing we noticed was that a single injection was not effective. The, the protocol required three injections uh, spaced about a week apart in the mice um, in order to achieve some therapeutic benefit. And so uh, based on the dosing and the dosing regimen in that uh, mouse experiment, we um, were able to, um, after many years, convince the FDA to approve a phase one clinical trial. And that is going on now. And uh, 20 patients have so far been treated 
with their own autologous MSC NPs. Um, they each get uh, a dose of 10 million cells um, and uh, intrathecal injection, and the doses are spaced three months apart. And this is a safety trial, so we're really looking to see if there are any adverse events, um, which there have not been so far. Um, but what's encouraging is that um, some some patients are, you know, having some some benefit um, in various areas, including some um, improvements in motor strength, uh, improvements in bladder function, um, and and so on. So about seventy percent of the patients in the trial so far have shown some improvement. Of course, this is not a placebo-controlled trial, but is um, encouraging nonetheless. Yeah, certainly, and and I think I mean we recently just. Um, featured the fact that you've received FDA approval now to move on to a phase two trial as well for this, right. this treatment. So that's fantastic news. So we've gotten the green light from the FDA. At this point, we are in the planning phase. So we're um, planning the trial, um, trying to get funding for the trial. Uh, we have started a collaboration with Wild Cornell Medical Center, also here in uh, New York City, to at another site, another clinical site um, for the trial. Um, so it's, we hope in, within the next six months we can uh, have some more definitive timelines for the phase two. Excellent, excellent. Um, I guess one of the things, stem cells have been a buzzword in MS research um, and, and across the MS community for really the past 12 to 24 months, um, mostly in terms of HSCT. Um, mm-hmm. Can you talk a little bit about how just to help people's understanding how what you're doing differs from, from HSCT? Yeah, that's probably the most frequent question that we get when we talk about this. Um, so HSCT, of course, is um, also a, involves a bone marrow stem cell population. But the purpose of HSCT is really to reboot the immune system. So, um, so it's really getting at the the um, the heart of the autoimmunity and the the, um, the trigger of MS, um, and it's really intended for um, aggressive um, early disease. What we're focused on is so first of all our our uh, the stem cells that we derive from the bone marrow is a, it's a different type of stem cell. It's a, a mesenchymal stem cell, not a hematopoietic stem cell. So it doesn't hematopoietic stem cells form immune cells, um, mesenchymal stem cells um, form uh, cells of the mesenchymal lineage, like bone and fat and cartilage. Um, Secondly, we are focused on not um, modulating autoimmunity, but we are focused on repairing uh, central nervous system tissue. So, um, Remyelinating um, regeneration of nerves and, and so on. So it's really intended for uh, more progressive forms of the disease. Okay. So in your trials, um, obviously you're I mean, the phase one stage at the moment, but in the planning stage for the phase two, um, do you see this as having? Uh, are you just going to be looking at certain subsets of MS, or will you be? Will this be looking at relapsing remitting, secondary progressive patients? Will anyone be? Eligible? Well, in the phase one, we uh, we only included progressive patients, but we included patients with a range of disability. So, um, if you're familiar with EDSS, really between 3.5 and 8. Um, so, um, you know, so different ranges of ambulation mm-hmm. in the patient uh, in the patient cohort. Um, for the phase two, we will. Um, probably also only include progressive MS patients, but we may include some um, that are sort of a borderline relapsing remitting uh, secondary progressive. So that's still sort of in the uh, planning stages and it will be based on um, the outcomes of the phase one. Okay, that's fantastic. Um, so this is obviously, I mean, we're gonna be broadcasting this out to um, a wide range of people with MS in our communities across a variety of platforms. Um, in the stage that you're at, finishing up a phase one trial, going into a phase two trial,
trial. Um, how can people with MS help support the, the work that you're doing? Well, you know, well, the Tisch Center, it, it, the, our funding model has always been a mixture of um, grant support and private sources. So patient donations um, really forms a big part of our um, research um, income. And a project like this ha wouldn't have been possible without the patient donations that we've been able to receive. So as, as we move into a phase two, obviously it's um, the costs go way up and we will be applying for, um, for funding from the National MS Society and the NIH and so on, but we, we really do depend on um, patient donations for, for additional support and without which I, I don't think we could, we could move forward in, in the way that we'd like to. I think from one of my early conversations, um, with another member of the team that she told me that um, the phase one trial, the crowdfunding for that was one of the largest um, ever generated for a medical research project, is that? Yeah, it was exciting. We did a, um, uh, similar to a Kickstarter, Indiegogo campaign, and we raised over $300,000 um, in a very short amount of time. So it was very, um, we have, uh, we have a, a lot of patient support, and we um, we it really has enabled us to get to this point. Um, you know, a lot of people consider a stem cell treatment as very risky and and not fundable, and and um, we you know we really couldn't have done it without uh, the patient support. I think this is this is something that we've been talking about a little bit recently on on MS Translate in terms of the power that the community actually has to. To really drive research forward and, and not only I guess with funding and, and helping support projects that, that they think should be continuing but also just in terms of how they go about talking about projects online and, and providing feedback um, that can really help drive research projects forward so um, it's, it's really interesting to hear that. Um, all right well thank you I think um, that should give people a great insight into the work you're doing. Um, we're hoping to provide more research updates on, on the work they're doing as they progress. Um, but thank you so much for your time today. Um, we really appreciate it. Uh, and we hope to talk again soon. Okay, thank you. I'm happy to participate in this website. I think it's a, a great thing. So thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much. Talk soon. Thank you.